What's up, YouTube? This is Bison X79, guys. Today I'm coming to you with my latest Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherry Target video. For those of you who haven't seen this video before, this is my way of tackling the meta through the focus of utilizing Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries to basically rip your opponent's extra deck apart by removing key play cards from the extra deck to prevent them from creating plays. Now, overall, this meta is kind of very interesting. The new ban list went into effect April 1st, as well as it can really be divided into two parts. Pre-Secret Slayers and post-Secret Slayers. And we're going to take a look at the Quarantine Cup right here. We see the breakdown right there. Lunar Lights, Dinosaurs, Invoked, and Dominium, Hero, Orcus, and Trains. These were all the top decks at the beginning of the month. Very awesome. Um, very diverse. When we get to the top eight, Invoke McKnight, Dinosaur, Sky Striker, Mecha Fandom, Giant Ballpark Trains, Mermail, and Spiral. These are pretty much what we were seeing as you get to the tops. Uh, Sky Striker was pretty, very interesting, in my opinion, considering that all oh, the hate to sustain. But right now, when we get past the Secret Slayer release, it really turned around in this particular situation. And Basically, Adam Antipater and Eldritch hybrids have basically been pretty much on the rise since then. DDD is a one-off. Do not count this deck off because it does combo off pretty well. It does have some pretty interesting matchups. But <clears throat> of all the decks you're going to be pretty much seeing playing online because since there's no physical events, Adam Antipater as well as the Eldritch Settlement grades invoked, whether it be the Eldritch version, Mech Knight versions, Pure, or even the Shadal versions, those are going to probably be the, the higher up ones as well. Settlement grades and Dinosaurs will also round out the meta as some of the top decks you will be seeing, especially since um, Eternity Code has become legal online for a lot of different tournaments. So we're going to be seeing a lot of the post Eternity Code dinosaurs, things like. They're including the new Krakosaur Synchro Monster, as well as the new Arkosaur Main Deck Monster, which can really help the deck get going. With that being said, we're going to take a look at the post Eternity Code Dinosaur build, and there are three primary cards that Ghost Reaper can really hit on to make this deck hard pressed to utilize, and that's going to be the token generators of Link Cross and Mecha Venom Beast. Auradon, both of these cards can put a lot of different tokens onto the field that can allow dinosaur players to really sink her off and build into their fields. Accessing both Trishula as well as the Krakosaur Synchro Monster. By removing these cards, both Link Cross and Mecha Venom Beast from your opponent's extra deck, you're pretty much shutting down their ability to extend into their synchro plays and denying them access to those synchros. Now, you could potentially go for the synchros themselves. Those would be f fine targets. Um, for me, I prefer going after their extenders because just denying them those extenders really prevents them from being able to build and combo off. It can shut down those plays a little bit earlier. The th other primary... Now, you want to choose between either one of the Mecha Phantom Beast or the Link Cross. Really depends on your personal pr preference. I would prefer the Mecha Phantom Beast since the tokens are level 3 and that's easy access into either Trishul or the Krakos or Synchro. However, my secondary target would definitely be True King of All Calamities because most dinosaur players are going to be having at least a couple of the True King cards in their main deck, and they still are going to be able to access this card moving forward. Removing this card is basically removing a skill drain style of Fleet Effect from their plays, and it just hurts them a whole lot. Now going into the Salamine Raids, pretty much the targets really haven't changed all that much. Salamine Wolf is primary target, primarily because it's the key to the Salamine Raids recursion. Removing this pretty much is going to force them to scoop. They're not going to be able to recur their resources um, as easy without Salamine Wolf in their extra deck. So that's going to be your primary target to remove. Your secondary would be Salamine Raid Bailings, primarily because of its ability to protect any Salamine Raid cards that are on the field. And the third and final one is going to be Update Jammer, primarily because it's utilized to build into Transco Talker, and from there Transco Talker can get two attacks and be able to OTK at that point. So you really don't want to be a, and allow them to have that access 
to that particular play moving forward. For Shadow decks, whether it be the Invoke or Pure Shadows, Shadow Window, which locks you down to both players down to one special summon per turn, as well as Shadow Construct are your primary targets. Construct is usually utilized as an extender, but it does have that 2800 attack point, as well as that Ally of Justice Cataster effect against special summon monsters that can really be problematic when it hits the field. Now moving into the vote, whether it be Shadal Invoked, Elledge Invoked, or even Invoked Mech Knight, your primary targets are going to be Invoked Mech Knight Mechaba, primarily because this is your Invoked Engine's primary negate, allows you to negate monster spells or traps, effects of your opponents, or vice versa. And I can tell you right now, removing these negates from your opponent's extra deck really can hurt their chances at winning because they won't be able to stop your place as easily. The next card is going to be Invoke Percatrio, primarily because this is the per Invoke's engine's form of OTK. It gains 200 attack for each card your opponent controls. That's front row and back row, so it can make this card pretty damn big pretty quickly. And it can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. So against the... Eldritch matchup, this is pretty much your damage maker because even if they can turn around and summon out their trap monsters, even in defense position, it's going to be game over from that point. And the last card is going to be Evoked Kaliga, primarily because it locks you into one attack and one monster effect per turn. It usually comes out in defense position, and with Alistair in hand, it can beef up that defense into 2800, which can be kind of hard getting over, especially if you can't extend properly. Now, the last deck that I'm going to talk about is the Adamancipator deck. This is a rock-based deck that can really basically sink her off and do a whole lot of different things. Um, the extra decks vary pretty much. However, there are a few key cards that you really should focus primarily in on, and the first one is going to be Surprise, Christian Hacker Flipbricks. A lot of the decks I've been seeing have been running either one to two copies, primarily just to extend or be able to play around things like Monster Effect Negates. Very honest, removing this card from any synchro based deck is going to be very useful. So it could be very a uh, target for your dinosaur deck as well. But Against an Emancipators, this is definitely something you want to be getting out of your opponents. Actually, this way they can get additional tuners on board and utilize the Ad Emancipator tuner's ability to basically get more monsters on the field or into their hands. The next card is going to be Gallant Granite. The primary reason why this card's on the, my radar for the Ad Emancipator matchup, primarily because is this card can get them any Rock-type monster from their deck into their hand, and that also includes Nibiru. Just being able to play a cowboy deck against an Emancipator and having them search out their Nibiru is not a good thing. Definitely something that I would turn around and that hit when facing off against this deck. And the last card is actually going to be the Ad Emancipator Rising Dragite. Dragite actually has built-in negates for spell and traps, as well as the ability to bounce back a lot of different cards off of its excavation mill and this card is insanely powerful for the emancipator deck because it helps them clear your boards so they can actually come and come in and swing pretty damn hard against you once they do clear that board in my opinion this card not Leonite should have been the one that was short printed, but it was the reverse way around, and we got this boss monster that's pretty well available and easy to get out since it is just a generic level eight. All right, guys, that is it for my Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries target video for the current format, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this on my channel. Make sure to subscribe, enable notifications so you don't miss any uploads. Check out the description box below, find the invite link to my Discord server, join a conversation, we would love to have you. Follow me on social media, Twitter, and Reddit. And if you guys want to help support the channel, use my TCG Player affiliate link in the description box below, and good health. Alright guys, as always, until next time, peace!